There it is. All right. Uh, so the third talk in the session is on polymorphic reachability types, and Guanan will be giving the talk. Okay. Thanks. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Guanan, and I'm going to present our work on polymorphic reachability types. This is a joint work with Oliver, Sony, Yuan, and Tiark. So if we look at the trends of typed system program languages of recent years, Rust is perhaps the one that gets most of the attention. It offers memory safety, threat safety, and pretty good performance comparable to C. And the secret sauce behind the success of Rust is its ownership type system, which tracks how resources, especially memory resources, are used. And after two decades of research on ownership types, only Rust has become the most admired program language by programmers, even though it is still sometimes cumbersome to use. But Rust is clearly not the end of the history. And what would post Rust languages look like? Since Rust is a low level language, perhaps we can expect some new language that will preserve good things from Rust, but also provide more higher level abstractions. On the other hand, there are existing high level languages. They can also add new features similar to Rust. Indeed, we have already seen this happening. For example, the module language from Modular AI, Wift from Apple, and some OCaml variant developed by Janstreet. They're all adding some Rust as their ownership types into existing high level languages. Academic work also reflects these trends. Variety substructural type systems have been studied over decades as well, and recently Haskell has an extension with linear types, which offers similar capability to constrain how resources are used. And the Stella 3 also adds a new feature called capture types, aiming at ensuring safe use of effects as capabilities. And the talk of capturing types will just be followed after this one. And I really look forward to that. However, despite those proposals, there is a more fundamental problem, which is how to smoothly combine functional and type level abstraction with resource tracking and control. There is a tension between the secret sauce from Rust and pervasive sharing from functional abstraction. Specifically, by the secret sauce of Rust, I mean its underlying shared X or mutable principle or restriction, meaning that if a resource is shared, then it cannot be mutable. On the other side, in higher order programming, we use first class functions everywhere. And these first class functions, they can capture things from their defining environment. And if we have multiple functions defined in the same scope, they will naturally share the same environment and also resources defined in, the, in this environment. Moreover, these functions can escape from their defining scope, making it even more challenging to track how resources are used. To resolve this tension, our previous work proposed the reachability types to track sharing and separation in higher order languages. The reachability type system is augmented to track context, such as what are the capabilities can be observed. It also tracks spatial structure, such as aliasing and reachability of references. Additionally, we can also layer a flow sensitive effect system to track how things are changed by execution order. And in this way, we can model ownership transfer or move semantics. Of course, we are not the first work to have these ideas, and our work is inspired by a lot of previous work on alias types, region-based type system, and etc. Here's one example about escaping pairs with mutable data in reachability types. This counter function returns two functions that both capture the same reference cell in a mutable way, and this is now supported by the static type system of Rust, if not using runtime reference counting or unsafe features. In contrast to that, Reachability types offer a more smooth way to track the sharing environment, even after the pair has escaped. Compared with the approach of Rust, we start from a more liberal foundation of tracking sharing information, and then put constraints, such as uniqueness, on top of that. And we think this is a more suitable way to integrating ownership types with higher order languages. In this work, we build on top of reachability types and further address the issue of how to smoothly combining uh, reachability types with polymorphism. Specifically, we propose a new notion of freshness, and our new design offers both lightweight and quantified reachability polymorphism. Let's look at these things with some examples. The first key idea is to augment the type system with a qualifier, which is a set of variables that can be reached from the evaluation result of this term E. For example, we can define a variable bound to a newly allocated reference cell and the typing of this variable just to track its own variable name. And notationally wise, sometimes for singleton sets, we just omit those curly braces for sets. 
And we can further assign x to y, and the typing of y just tracks itself, because in this context, we can transitively trace its reachability. And for primitive resources, such as integers, their qualifier is just the empty set, meaning untracked resources. Function types also have a qualifier, and this is basically the free variables captured by the function. For example, this function captures a reference cell defined in the outer scope, and the type of this function reflects this context. But now the question is, what should be the qualifier for a fresh allocation? One option is to assign the bottom of the qualifier hierarchy, meaning that the expression shares nothing from the environment. But this could either lead to unsoundness if without a special treatment to distinguish it from truly untracked status, or with some special treatment, the system becomes non-parametric and leads to a loss of precision in tracking reachability. Another possible choice is to assign the top qualifier in the subtyping hierarchy, indicating that this expression can potentially be shared with anything. But this is not quite the case because it actually shares with nothing. And also in this way, we also need a special treatment to make polymorphic work. This new idea in this work is that instead of using either the top or bottom in the reachability hierarchy, we can designate a special marker for freshness, indicating statically unobservable variables or locations. And in our design, we use this diamond notation for the freshness marker. And this unobservable variable or locations, they may materialize during, during evaluation. And for example, this new ref expression becomes a fresh location value after one reduction step. And the typing of the location has a reachability qualifier, which grows with that new location. A fresh expression can be bound to a known variable. And importantly, bound variable qualifier are not subtype of freshness, otherwise, we will lose tracking of these resources. And in this way, we can have a parametric treatment of reachability, and we do not have conflation or untracked resources and fresh resources. An important use of freshness marker is to support both scoped and non-scoped introduction forms of resources. For example, here we have a tricombinator that takes a function as input, and this tricombinator provides a capability to throw an exception. And we do not want this can through capability to escape from this scope. Otherwise, the through exception may not be handled. And this is achieved in our system since the qualifier for can grow with a variable C is not a subtype of the freshness marker. Moreover, we can also support non scoped introduction forms. For example, we can just return a new reference cell in the body of the function passed to this tri combinator. And compared with capturing types, Thanks to the freshness notion, we think our calculus is more flexible and expressive in terms of supporting non-scoped introduction forms of resources. In our calculus, we can also track the absence of reachability, which is separation. As an analogy in intersection types, this is actually a stronger property that cannot be derived in typical syntactic type systems with intersection types. In our system, as a key invariant in the soundness proof, intersection or union of reachability are preserved during evaluation so that we can use intersection of sets to check separation. If the intersection of two reachability sets are empty, then they are indeed separate. The key idea here is to ensure separation, we can use the freshness marker as the argument qualifier when defining a function. And function application checks separation between the function and the given argument. For example, here we have the ID function, identity function, that can accept any argument. Although it sounds obvious, but the key observation here is that any argument is in fact fresh for this closed function ID. Because the function is closed, it cannot observe anything from the environment. Therefore, any argument expression is fresh for the function, which is consistent with the freshness marker annotated on the function. But are there cases we cannot apply some arguments to a function? Here is my example. We have C1 and C2, which are two different reference cells defined in the same scope. And the function at ref captures C1 and tries to mutate it. And we cannot apply C1 as argument to L ref, because both the function and the argument, they can reach C1. And in this case, C1 is not fresh for the function. And we can check this by computing the intersection of two reachability sets. 
but the function can accept C2 as argument because it is not overlapped with C1. So the key idea here is a contextual notion of freshness. An argument is fresh in the context if the function cannot observe an overlap with other variables captured by the function. And of course, we can also explicitly describe the permissible overlap or aliasing pattern by adding variable names into argument qualifier. For example, here we can add C1 into the function's argument qualifier, then applying add ref2 with argument C1 is perfectly OK. Ensuring separation is very useful in many applications. For example, in the paper, we have showed how to type a parallel evaluation combinator that only accepts two sums with disjoint qualifiers. In this way, we can ensure non-interference if we run those two sums in parallel. In this example, this par combinator takes two sums, and one captures C1 and the other captures C2, which is safe to run in parallel. Our calculus also offers lightweight and precise reachability polymorphism. Without you using explicit quantification, this is useful to adopt our approach on existing code base, since there is no need to add quantified variables, which is arguably more heavyweight. For example, we still have this identity function here, and the resulting qualifier of the identity function can depends on the input argument reachability, and there is no loss in precision when applying any kinds of arguments to the ID function. And this is what we call precise reachability polymorphism. The calculus can be further extended with bounded parametric reachability in the style of system F sub. And in this way, we have introduced a quantified variable for reachability. This is also very useful for expressing polymorphic data structures, as well as reachability tunneling, as shown in this pair example, where we can build a pair and its component reachability are preserved after projecting the components of this pair. So we have formalized our system with a simply typed version and also a version with bounded polymorphism in the style of F sub. We have also shown the typeability of church encoding of pairs with reachability qualifiers in our system called F diamond subsystem. We have proved syntactic soundness using progress and preservation. The preservation also shows that polypairs may grow only because of new allocations. And one important corollary is the preservation of separation, meaning that two separate terms remain separate during evaluation. Our proofs are mechanizing COG, and there's also an ongoing effort mechanizing our systems using logical relations, which allow us to prove stronger properties. There's also a prototype implementation called the diamond language, which, which you can also find in this link. So to conclude, we have proposed the polymorphic reachability types with an explicit notion of freshness, it tracks sharing and separation in higher order generic languages. It provides a foundation to be used in almost any impure functional languages. And it paves the way for integration of reachability types in, in practical polymorphic languages. And finally, I would like to mention that I'm turning on the academic job market. And you can find more about my research on my homepage, Continuation Passing Style. I'm also happy to talk about this offline. And thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take questions. All right. Uh, I think we can start with a question from Discord again, if you uh, want to find someone in the meantime. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Instead of the freshness, uh, freshness marker, could we use a more standard nominal quantifier? In other words, freshness markers are the language level feature, but can you decompose them into pre-existing, more foundational constructs? Um, some nominal qualifiers. Um, that sounds like an interesting idea. We haven't really thought about this. Um, yeah, maybe that's possible. Yeah. All right. Uh, yep. Great. Uh, thanks very much for that lovely talk. I just wanted to to clarify. So. Um, in the kind of par example, um, is it fine to uh, kind of immutably borrow so you can have both threads read from the same reference as long as they don't write to it? That's possible with our effective system extension uh -huh. uh, because once we can discern different effects from read or write, then we can have more finer, finer notion about those non-interference. The answer is yes, possible with uh, a minor extension about the effective system. 
Oh, great. So is that in, in the paper or is that something that's sort of to come? In the, in the what? Is it in the paper, that um, extension? Yes, that's, that's in the paper. The paper has a brief section discussing that. Great, thanks. Okay, hello. Um, thanks for a very nice talk. Um, so once you introduce these kinds of separation properties, like it becomes very tempting to use them to justify rewrites in a compiler. Have you thought much about the equational theory of your, uh, of your language with reachability types? Right, right. We actually had a Uppsala paper last year, Uppsala 23, and that's a, a compiler IR with reachability types. And we do have an ongoing work using logical relation to formalize the equational theory to support or prove or justify those rewriting rules. And that's indeed work in progress, and I think you will see that soon. We have an archive paper actually on the on the on archive draft there. Other questions? Oh. Hi, thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, so yeah, my question was kind of uh, in addition to the previous question. Uh, so for the mechanization effort using logical relation, can you give a high level overview of that? Otherwise I can also look, up, look for the archive paper. I'm just curious. Thank you. Right, that, that is to uh, uh, work in progress. Uh, in, in our this current work, we have the syntactic mechanization, and the logical relation is, uh, is kind of giving the, the, the interpretation for those qualifiers, for those uh, terms and types. Um, that's kind of like, um, like in a, a denotational style for giving the semantics for reachability types. Uh, so it's uh, more I think that's a high-level way to say that. Okay, yeah. thank you. So it's more like a axiomatic style of... Um, I probably wouldn't say axiomatic. It's, okay. Um, it, yeah. Okay, I can look for the paper. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right, uh, I think we can take... Uh, I think there's a question over there. Um, take one more while the next speaker is setting up. Mm -hmm. F thank you for the talk. Um, one application that comes to mind is uh, using your reachability tracking to type check mutually recursive definitions and make sure that you have no cycles basically in the dependencies. Is that something that you have looked into? Uh, that sounds like an interesting application. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, how this could work. Um, yeah, I think we, we, I believe we have thought a bit on this, and especially it would be useful if combined with uh, another notion, what we call is must reachability. Because currently we track those um, uh, may, may reachability uh, relation. I think combined with must reachability, it could be useful to track relation, uh, recursions as well. All right, uh, we're out of time, so let's thank the speaker again.